Today, we are going to be looking at The Last of Us 2 Out of Bounds. And what does that mean? It means that we're going to be looking at the game in angles and areas that you've never seen before. It's going to be pretty exciting, but first I got to say thank you to Specializer who donated all the footage for this episode. Absolutely Herculean task, I should know. So thank you, sir. I got all of his links, whether it be his YouTube channel or social medias down below. And with that said, let's get started. All right, so first I just want to give you guys a little bit of a spoiler warning. There will be a couple of spoilers here and there throughout the video. But to start with, here is the title screen menu. As you know, you normally get to see a boat. But if we take the camera inside the boat, you can see that there's nothing really that interesting except for the fact that the water level clips through the boat itself. But it's what's behind the camera that's really cool. As you can see, the sand from the Santa Barbara beach fight between Ellie and Abby is still loaded into the main menu. But okay, this is the pre-completion menu. What about the post-completion menu? Once you have the game beat, you get this main menu instead, and there's something hidden behind this camera as well, surprisingly. Over on this map, you can see that there's some rocks found behind the main menu camera, which, you know, you never get to see these. It even comes with its own little bush. Uh, yeah, well, let's turn the camera back around and see what's in the front. You can also see Catalina Casino, which, by the way, is a real-life building located in Catalina Island. So since it's normally far off in the distance, let's take a good close-up look at it. Now, as you can see here up close, it's understandably low detail. You're never supposed to get this close. And also, you can find some billboard trees off to the right of the casino. It's kind of interesting that they even have a billboard effect for something with a very static camera like the main menu. But the reason why they went with this is because they actually didn't know 100% sure where they were going to place the camera at the end of the day. And so by including the billboard trees, they could place the camera anywhere and they'd be guaranteed that the trees would be following the camera position. Anyways, here's a zoom out of the map and you guys can just soak that in as we kick off the beginning of the game. So here's the very first scene of the game. This is where Joel is telling Tommy about what happened at the end of The Last of Us 1. As you can see here, Tommy doesn't exist. And all you can see is his floating gun. Which makes this all the more interesting because you can see the exact moment in which he does spawn in. This house right here is from the first ever The Last of Us 2 trailer in 2016. It's only slightly modified in the final build. Normally you don't ever get to see the whole house so you'd never notice this. The best use of resources I have ever seen. Just a character model, lighting, small mountain, and a well-placed camera. And if you look over here, you can see Tommy and Joel in an A pose waiting to be called into the next scene. Next up is a viewer request. As always, you can follow me on Twitter to find out what the next episode is going to be, as well as leave any requests as you would want to see in the future episode. And the request that we got this time was to see a zoom out of the whole beginning flashback segment. All maps are loaded in at the same time, which means that this is all done in real time. Lighting and NPCs are all switched around at any given moment, fully adjusting itself for each and every scene. Over here you can see a low poly Jackson in the distance. The quote unquote lights you see are actually just two toned yellow texture cubes that are rotated at an angle. And at the risk of getting corrected over 500 times from different people that did not check to see if someone else has already made this quote unquote correction, I'm just gonna throw it out there and give you my theory that the developers deliberately made this look like Colby Jack cheese cubes. Come on, Jackson, Colby Jack. Can I please get a developer in the comments section to confirm this, please. You can also see here that the NPCs are very far away from the player and have lower quality animations. Less frames means less resources, so it makes sense for the characters at this distance to have significantly less animation. Also, if we take the camera over here, you can see that it says missing material. The missing material texture is used throughout all recent Naughty Dog games. This includes Uncharted 4. You might remember that from a previous episode, it even had a plate on top of it. And over here you can see unpolished animations for the NPCs and Seth in the kitchen since the player would barely be able to see them. It's always fun to see stuff like this in games where the characters are super high detailed. But alright, anyways, let's do a zoom out of the Jackson map. So I know some of you want to know where Joel and Tommy come from when they help Abby being chased by a horde of infected. And well, there you go. And also here's the quote unquote horde that Joel, Tommy, and Abby are being chased by. It's a whole lot of nothing. I mean, why would you? It would just waste up resources and the player never got a chance to see it. Looks like the developers had always made the choice to not show the horde in this scene. 
And now it's time to talk about everybody's favorite scene in the whole game. And I promise you, there's actually a great reason to talk about it. Like for example, before Ellie walks into the room, two WLF NPCs are sitting in place of where Joel is supposed to be for some reason. This is truly bizarre and doesn't really make any sense on the surface because these NPCs aren't even used in this scene. And you can see those NPCs despawn and be replaced with all the NPCs in their correct spots. And here's one more interesting little fact. If we zoom in here on Abby, you can see that her armor tracks into her body when she's off camera. And here's some unused content as well. There's a hidden blood spatter animation that you never see when Abby smashes in Joel's head. Why did I say that in such a jovial way? Whatever. Anyways, it's removed a few seconds after when the next camera angle is shown. And then in the graveyard scene, we can take the camera and move it around and show you the names of the other graves. For example, we have Anne Clark, Scott King, Albert Parker, Samuel Scott, Ernest Martin, Jacqueline Ward, Douglas Thomas, Carl Reed, Ernest Sanders, Carolyn Gray, Frank Reed, Carl Adams, Philip Harris, Plank Ariadne Reigns, Gloria Hutton, Claire Michael, Eleanor Moss, Cecil Ross, Marshall Vu. And we'll do a zoom out to just kind of tell you really quick, uh, I've been told that these names aren't related to the staff in any sort of way. So it could just be randomly generated names, unless they are way more personal than just the staff names themselves. Now let's talk about the flashbacks. There's this flashback scene where Ellie pretends to go to space. And when you pan the camera out, you can see it's just a combination of lighting and camera effects. And in fact, to talk about that animation in which Ellie is acting like she's actually in a spaceship, it looks really weird without the camera shake effects. And note, Joel has no animations when he's off camera. This is the sort of thing you'd expect to see from a studio as big as Naughty Dog, which is, again, really surprising for some of the other stuff that we saw earlier in the episode. Aiming with a scope causes Ellie's body and backpack to become invisible. Obviously, fans of Boundary Break already know this is to avoid any clipping. You don't want to see any of the character model in the shot. But you can also see how parts of the weapon are missing too, which is something that I don't see quite as often. If you fail this time task where Jesse and Ellie are trying to escape in a car, Jesse gets shot and you have to restart. But here's what that scene looks like from another angle. An NPC spawns on top of the untextured block mesh cube, which it's weird that they use an actual NPC on top of the cube. It would have been much safer to assume that it would just be a floating gun like it was in Uncharted 4. In this flashback scene with Ellie and Tommy sniping infected, the bullet casings actually travel when you shoot for some reason. This is significant because the detail is so minute and also it's going at bullet speed, so of course you're never going to see any of this detail. Also in the flashback scene, there's this bloater that smashes Ellie out of the wall. Now that bloater has a full animation running up the wall and pulling her out, which is something you don't normally get to see. And here is a zoom out of the whole flashback sniping scene. Here's the scene where Ellie sneaks up and takes out the PS Vita girl, also known as Whitney. Now here's something that's really interesting. Whitney is playing Hotline Miami, and players can normally see this. But underneath the screen, you can see the PlayStation Vita dashboard, complete with the PS Store and trophies and everything else. Here's Nora's death from another angle. She actually has no reaction to any of the hits. Here's the scene where Joel tells Ellie the truth. Here you can see where Joel comes from on his horse, but more importantly, there's a third horse hidden underneath the map for some reason, and it goes completely unused. And here's the hospital interior map loaded out of bounds from the previous scene even though it's no longer being needed. In Seattle, the player can see the Space Needle building. Now this is far out in the distance with various other different environments. Unfortunately, it is a low poly version. A more detailed version, which is also very hard for the player to see, can be found later. In this scene, this is where Jesse goes looking for Tommy, and when Jesse jumps down from the ledge, his eyes disappear. You can also see some very broken animation. Here's what the lightning looks like from the player's point of view. And this is what the thunderclouds look like from another angle. The clouds are a few layers of 2D textures that appear when the lightning strikes. And over here is the edge of the detailed water. Here's the flashback scene with Abby and her father, and as you can see here, there's an unused 2D texture of trees underneath the map. There's also a purple block mesh tree left out of bounds, 
which also has a real tree inside of it. Now here's something that's really cool. Over off in the distance here, you can see low poly NPCs, but they're not just any low poly NPCs. They are the NPCs that were used in Uncharted 4. It's great to see reused assets from game to game when you can, and I'll never ever get tired of a good low poly model. It's actually surprising that you don't see too many of these in the game, to be honest with you. And here is Abby's aquarium flashback. If you take the camera close up, you can see where the seal spawns and despawns. Meanwhile, at the aquarium square, Abby's looking for Owen. Taking the camera well out of the bounds, you can see a random panel with an X on it. And what it's doing here, I have no freaking clue. Now here's a vanilla shot of the safe house that Abby returns to and finds the dead scars. Taking the camera outside of its intended spot, you can see that part of Lev's animation is hidden. And here's another viewer request, a zoom out of the scene where Abby is crossing the sky bridge. And let me tell you, this map is very, very big. Here's a hidden animation of the Rat King sneaking up on Abby. So now let's talk about all the sniping scenes with Tommy. There's a part where Tommy is sniping Abby and Manny, and Tommy's model actually does exist in this scene even though you'll never be able to get close enough to see him. And funny enough, the sniper glare is just a 2D billboard texture. And over here you can see Manny's death from another angle. Normally you don't see the moment in which Tommy kills Manny, so this part is completely off camera. In the scene where Tommy gets pushed into the sea by Abby, you can see where Tommy goes when he falls. And you can also see Yara spawning with her mocap animation. It's nothing too impressive, but it's still something you can't normally see. Speaking of Yara's mocap, in this scene you can see Yara shooting Isaac with the mocap animation. It looks absolutely hilarious because the only thing that's being mocapped right now is the arm. Well, as precious as that was, I suppose now we can do a zoom out of the burning village. Here you can see the scene for Ellie and Dina's first kiss. And get a load of this! The lights are actually 2D billboard textures, and the depth of field blurs out the background, so the player would never know that they're not really lights. Also, Joel is sitting in the background having a drink when Seth approaches Ellie and Dina. The player never sees this. Fully mo-capped, too! In this scene, Ellie gets caught by the Rattler Trap. And over here you can see that Abby and Lev's models are the ones that are used and then swapped out for the Rattlers, which is so bizarre. And then there's the scene where Ellie frees the prisoners from Santa Barbara and all their animations break and twist their bodies when they go off camera. And now we're making it towards the end of the game here and we got Abby and Ellie fighting. And here you can see where Ellie's knife goes when Abby smacks it out of her hands, stuck just below the water level in the void. Also, here's a mocap animation of Abby getting into her boat and starting it up. And then for the final scene of the game, you can see Ellie's spawn location, and you'll also see that the house has an interior. This is something you never get to see. And while we take a look at that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Uh, if what do you want to see? I think that we're going to do Resident Evil 8 next as much as I want to do a region break. I think I got to hit the iron while it's hot, I guess. But I'm also down for like remakes or whatever. Just uh, leave me a comment. I'll read them for sure. Good night. Hope to see you again.